Happy New Year! The holidays are over and now we're back with the news. From metal printing to totally new types of 3D printers, 3D printed bicycles going to market, and 3D printed faces a la Mission Impossible. It's gonna be a great 2021, so let's get right into it. First, as you all know, the holidays are gone, so now it's just ski season. Soon, you might be able to pick up a pair of 3D printed skis or even a snowboard. Back in 2014, Stratasys actually printed skis out of Ultim 9085, which is one of the materials that we specialize in here at Vision Miner. And at the time, they took about three days to print. But I think with something like the Ascentium HSE, uh, which is also available on our website, you could crank out a set in a matter of a few hours. They've actually made skateboards over there, and you can see the video on their YouTube, and uh, that only took a matter of hours to print. But practically, we've actually got a few things you can print and a few things that are getting printed in the industry, from shoe skis that you can print yourself to RC plane skis for all that winter wonderland flying this season, uh, to full-size snowboards and even boots. Definitely check out the link in the description. There's some great stories behind each one of these objects. And we're gonna move right along into the next thing, which is large format 3D printing is making General Electric wind turbines more powerful and more efficient. Now, with blade diameters measuring more than two football fields, GE Renewable's Halide X turbines are already the largest and most powerful in the world, capable of generating as much as 14 megawatts of energy. They've been limited in the past by the difficulty of transporting such huge blades and huge bases, uh, but the ability to 3D print the turbine's concrete base on site will enable the deployment of much larger systems. Today, the blades are produced using extremely costly, super advanced molds, which are not just large, but they also need to be very complex to enable effective cooling and curing of the fiberglass reinforced blades. In the future, we might even see large format composite 3D printing technologies enabling more cost-effective production of these blade molds, and perhaps even the direct production of 100 plus meter long carbon fiber reinforced blades. Continuous Composites is doing some really cool stuff with that and robot arms and it's, it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Next we've got Superstrata, the company founded by Revo Labs to commercialize composite 3D printed bikes and e-bikes and they've actually shipped their first Superstrata bike. The bike is a significant milestone as it's the very first continuous fiber reinforced composites 3D printed consumer product ever to hit the market. Now, continuous resin printing is very, very interesting. Like mentioned in the article before, if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check out guys like Continuous Composites, and there's a few other companies out there. But with the first bike delivered from this company, they report that they're now in full production mode, which is awesome to see, especially in these times of the world. Next, we've got Zolo presenting the Zoob. <laughs> the first commercial volumetric 3D printer. Well, at least for pre-order. It's really designed as an experimental tool for zoology, as they're calling it, uh, which is a new form of vat polymerization. Basically, you've got the liquid resins from SLA and DLP, and they're, this time, they're actually using the whole vat and they're projecting an entire image, the entire print, the whole part, into one large vat to literally print the entire part at once. They've got some really cool examples on the site and in the article, and while the tech is still pretty much in the infancy stages, it has a very promising future. Check out the link in the description, and while you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button. It helps us out in the YouTube universe, and if there's something in particular you like, let us know in the comments so we can do more of that. Moving right along, we've got DMG Mori launching the LaserTech 6600 system to 3D print 4 meter long metal parts. If you know DMG Mori, uh, these guys clearly make huge machines, and they're bringing DED, or Directed Energy Deposition, into a hybrid lathe mill system with a Z-axis length of 4 meters. Yeah, it'll cost around $3 million, but it'll totally be worth it. You get DED, lasers, mills, and lathes all in one. Now, where is this actually going to apply? Think rocket engines, oil well pipes, shafts for aircraft. Uh, the possibilities are practically limitless. Moving right along, this is one you'll enjoy watching this weekend or maybe tonight 
Uh, proper printing on YouTube. Now this guy has printed an entire wheel for his Mercedes. It's a multi-part series of videos, so definitely check out and see how far he's come. He built a printer, he designed the parts, he went through a few different spools. Uh, it's, it's definitely been a bit of a challenge, uh, and I think there's a little bit of way to go, but it is pretty cool to see the trial and error that is the process of prototyping and 3D printing. And I think we could even help him out with some of those high temp, large format heated chamber machines we sell. Uh, heated chambers being very important for things like ABS, printing large parts, because the polymers just love to curl and warp uh, as they cool, and the heater chambers prevent that. They also increase part strength as the layer bonding is generally better, and there's less internal stresses inside the part. It's almost like you're annealing while you're printing in these machines. Definitely something to check out. The dude's done a really great job, and he's still got a ways to go, so we want to see how it turns out. And uh, in the meantime, check out our website. We specialize in high temp functional 3D printing from aerospace to medical to RC jet engines to NASA Ultimate 985 spacewalk suit filters and other crazy projects like that. We actually sell machines, materials, tools, and everything in between, including a print service if you're looking to get some things printed or just test out the capabilities of the machines we sell before you actually buy the system. Either way, definitely like, subscribe, and share this video, and we really, really appreciate it. Before before we move right along into the news blitz, that's right you asked and we brought it back. We've got a few things today, let's get right into it. Starting off, Open Additive has won an army contract for large scale additive manufacturing. NIST awarded $4 million USD to fund competitiveness in the metal 3D printing market. We've got Norse Titanium now delivering 3D printed Boeing 787 components. And Wham! Preparing to 3D print critical engine parts like piston sleeves. Really cool possibilities here, for sure. We've got some people in Japan 3D printing hyper-realistic face masks. Like masks of faces. Hyper-realistic faces, not face masks, you know. And lastly, we've got Relativity Space keeps raking in the funding with another $3 million awarded to launch cube satellites into orbit. So, in wrapping up, the question of the week is this. What is your favorite 3D printing industry? Is it the automotive? Is it aerospace? Is it space itself? Perhaps food or miniatures or metal additive manufacturing? Let us know in the comments below, and who knows, maybe we'll pick your favorite for our next topic video. So here at Fisher Miner, we specialize in high temperature performance thermoplastics like Peak and Ultim, which actually do go into space. We've had a lot of these projects going on, so check out our website. We've got machines and materials and everything else in between. Anyway, folks, that's all for today, and we're wishing you a happy, fun, and prosperous 2021. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.